Okay, today I'm gonna try a little experiment. Uh, considering I was born and raised in Stuttgart, Arkansas, which was named for the city in Germany, Stuttgart, Germany, I figured that a guy born and raised in Stuttgart should know something about kraut. So I like kraut. So I went to the uh, farmer's market this morning and I bought some fresh uh, cabbage and I thought I'd make some kraut and I would document it as I go. If it works, you'll get to see it. If it doesn't work, Eh, nobody will ever know. So, <laughs> what I've got here is I've got uh, some fresh cabbage that I've quartered and took the core out of. I've cored it. I have a mandolin here that will allow me to, to uh, slice this cabbage very, very fine. So, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this mandolin. And... I've got a little bit of salt here, and this just happens to be uh, sea salt, but any kind of salt will work. So the, the deal with making kraut is you slice up your cabbage, you, you shred it basically, as very uh, finely as you can, you put it in a bowl, and you add just a little bit of salt, not nearly as much salt as you would think. I mean, it's not like uh, for this bowl full, I might put a quarter uh, of a, a teaspoon worth of salt in there. And then you work it and you, you massage it and you manhandle it and you crunch it and you work it and you work that salt into the cabbage and what the cabbage does is that salt causes the cabbage to give up its, its liquid. And it's, it's pretty amazing. You'll, you'll see as I, as I work this uh, shredded cabbage and salt together in this bowl, you're going to see it get wetter and wetter and wetter and wetter. And after about 10 minutes of massage, um, we'll have a lot of moisture in this cabbage. And then we just transfer it to a food safe uh, container. I'm going to be using a, uh, a plastic, uh, food safe plastic bucket. And I'm going to about halfway fill it with this um, wet shredded cabbage with a little salt in it. And then I'm going to press it down in that bucket to make sure that the cabbage is completely covered with liquid. The way I'm gonna make sure that it's completely covered is I'm gonna put another bucket in on top of it and put some weight in that bucket. That'll keep it pushed down. What happens then is over the next, oh, two weeks, maybe three weeks, this cabbage will start to ferment down under that water, it's, it's uh, uh, an anaerobic uh, fermentation. And that shredded cabbage um, will turn into sauerkraut. And it'll start getting that sauerkraut smell to it and that sauerkraut um, uh, flavor. And that's really all that sauerkraut is. Now there's, there's other things that you can, can add to it, you can, um, uh, I, I like caraway seed in mine, just a little bit of caraway seed, give it a little bit of a flavor. Um, but we'll see, we'll see how this, how this all works. So bear with me. Okay, so now I've got my, my mandolin set up over my bowl and I've got my, my uh, cabbage here and I'm just gonna start by hand, I'm not going to use the, um, uh, the little car that rides on the mandolin. I'm just going to do it by hand. I'm going to start start uh, shredding up some of this cabbage. And, you know, you have to be careful with a mandolin, of course. Um, 
it's not real hard to shred up your fingers too. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get this cabbage shredded like this. See how fine that is? And that super fine uh, cabbage uh, will make some really fine uh, kraut. And so I'm going to continue shredding and I'll let you see what we got when I get down to it. And before we put the salt in, I'll let you see. So I'm still shredding. I try to pick out all these, uh, looks like they almost look like uh, chips. And what it is, is kind of down close to the core, uh, instead of getting uh, shredded, you get uh, sliced. And while those would still make kraut, uh, they just don't look as pretty in the, in the jars. So I'm going to kind of, you know, we're going for aesthetics here as well as flavor, I guess. Um, so I just kind of look through and make sure I get out most of the pieces like that. Yeah. I just think they're kind of ugly. But the rest of it is really looking good. And I think that's gonna that's really gonna make some some pretty crowd. That, yeah. yeah, it's pretty thin. Alright, let me work on this last quarter here. And we'll start putting some salt in here in just a minute. Okay, so I have finished up um, uh, shredding the the last of the cabbage that I had. I've got to go to the store and buy some more cabbage. I've got to go to the farmer's market and get some more. Because uh, I, you know, a couple of heads of cabbage don't go very far when you're trying to fill up a five gallon bucket. So I've got it shredded. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some salt. And this salt is, you can use whatever kind of salt you want. And like I said earlier, this is um, uh, sea salt, non-iodinized, easy for you to say. It doesn't have iodine in it. Um, sea salt. And so I'm going to start off with, I think this is about an eighth uh, of a teaspoon. I'm going to kind of just kind of sprinkle some around here. And the thing is, you want to get that salt incorporated into all of the cabbage. So the way you do that is you just start turning it and you start uh, kneading it and massaging it. And it's kind of messy because we're going to be, now that I got that turned over, let me put a little salt on the bottom side there. And as that salt gets worked in to this shredded cabbage, you're, you're going to notice over a period of time that this cabbage starts giving up its moisture. And as it does, you, it, the actual moisture that is in the kraut, the final product, is the moisture that actually came out of the cabbage to begin with. In most cases, you don't have to add any water. There's more than enough water in the cabbage to make your kraut. So I'm going to keep kneading this. It's going to take about 10 minutes. And I'm going to try to do a, a, a speed up on it. I'll try to uh, speed up the video a little bit. And you'll see that the longer I work this and the longer I need it, the wetter it gets. OK, 
kind of hear it. You can hear the the water in it. Check this out. So there's a lot of water that comes out of this cabbage. And that's what's going to allow us to do that anaerobic fermentation that's going to take wet, salty cabbage and make it into delicious sauerkraut. Okay, just got back from the farmer's market. I had to go get some more cabbage. So I went and got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more heads of cabbage. And so I'm gonna be slicing and dicing and doing cabbage. And when I get it all put in the bucket, I'll let you know, okay? I'll be right back. Okay. I ended up with about nine heads, medium-sized heads of cabbage, and I shredded it up, and I used the mandolin for some of it, and some of it I, I just used a chef's knife to, to shred it, um, and then I worked it with salt in a bowl, and I, I worked it in small batches, till it got good, most of the moisture was coming out of it and got good and wet. Then I put it in this bucket. And I did it batch after batch, and I don't remember, I think it took uh, that, clear that clear glass bowl that I was working with, I think it took about five or six of those. And you can see that I ended up with about this much. That's nine heads of cabbage. Uh, but but it's given up most of its water so it doesn't take up as much space so I've got about a level of about that much and let me uh, move the camera around so you can see what it looks like and um, then, I, then we'll talk a little bit more about it so this is what it's looking like after it's uh, in the bucket and a lot of the moisture's come out of it and you can see that um, it's got a lot of moisture on it. Um, let me stir it around just a little bit and you can see that there's quite a bit of moisture. The, the primary thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that the cabbage stays below the water level because we want anaerobic fermentation to take place and that happens in the absence of oxygen or absence of air. So what I've got is I have another bucket just like this one that I'm going to put on top and then put some weight on it and it'll hold it down, it'll hold the cabbage down under the water level as it ferments. So I'll be back and give you an update. In the first part of this video I said that this was an experiment. I was doing an experiment to make sauerkraut. Well, actually, this is the continuation of an experiment. I've already been experimenting with making sauerkraut. So, this was my first experiment. I uh, took a small jar, filled it up with um, cra uh, cabbage that I had uh, added salt to and in order to weight it down, I put a small jar inside a larger jar to keep it uh, submerged. And, and this is what the result was. It's uh, something that ended up being quite delicious. I made uh, several jars of this. And if I can get it to come up, oh, here it came. Okay. Um, I made several jars of this, and it's very kraut like. I'm just going to say. It smells like sauerkraut, it looks like sauerkraut, and it tastes. 
like sauerkraut. Um, I may have gotten a little bit too much salt in the first experiment. You notice I was I was pretty um, careful with the second batch. Uh, another thing, I, I know I know you probably can't see this, but like I have some kind of big pieces of like core in this batch. Yeah, I, I really didn't like it. Still, still works. Still tastes good, but you know sauerkraut's not supposed to have big crunchy chunks in it. So this, the batch I'm making now is my first full size experiment. Um, I also made uh, a little variation and it, it was this. And what this is, is it's the identical same thing as this, except I put caraway seeds in this. And so the uh, caraway seeds, really give it a a different uh, wang. It's got a different wang to it. And if you can see that, um, it looks different and it definitely has a different different flavor. Now, One of the things about making homemade sauerkraut, in my experience, is you end up with a product that's, that still has some texture to it. It's not like it's uh, just cooked down to nothing because it's not cooked at all. And even though it's fermented, it's still got some, there's still some sap, snap to it. So, when you put some of this in your mouth, you get, um, you still get a crunch, but it's not crunchy cabbage, it's kind of crunchy sauerkraut, which is cool. I love it. You guys, um, watch some of my other videos on my channel. Um, I've got videos of all sorts. This is my first uh, food related video. I might do more. See you later. Bye bye.